Hey, how's it going everyone? So what am I working on now? Well, I got this Ford Taurus. Um, actually, hold on, I don't even remember what year it was. I looked, and I don't remember, hang on. It is a 09 Taurus. I know a lot of you guys want the mileage, so let me see if I can't get the mileage. And of course, let me scroll through this. The sun glare here is terrible. Let me see. Sometimes just turn the key to the run position. 212,000 miles. Pretty substantial. So what's the customer's complaint? The customer's complaint is the AC, while it's blowing cold now, they say what happens is all of a sudden it'll shut down. Not that the AC gets warm, but the whole system shuts down. He said the display will keep reading, but it'll have no air. They'll drive around for a while, all of a sudden it'll start working again. Sometimes they'll come out in the morning to start it, it'll have nothing, it won't work. After a while, it'll start working again. So this is automatic temperature control, climate control, whatever you want to call it. And uh, what could be the problem with that? Well, most likely, it's probably something with the blower resistor. Now, one thing, um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. So most of the time, it's a blower resistor issue. Burned up wiring, something along those lines. I already detrimmed. I took the lower corner, the uh, kick panel stuff out just so I could see inside there and see what I got going on. Sorry, I got people walking around out here talking, so it's kind of distracting me. Um, but let's go back to the other side and let's look underneath. I already took that off just to see what was there and then I had to grab a trim panel tool and I'm like, you know what? Let me make, make, a, let me make a video on this and see what happens. Uh, so yeah, let's go that way. Because what I want to try to do is get to the blower resistor to actually unplug it and see what the end of it actually looks like. Because a lot of times you can actually see that end burned up. It happens more often than you think it does. So let's go over to that side and let's see what we got. So what I did was I pulled the door seal up and off. I pulled the sill molding up and then I got this panel out from underneath it. I was able to do that with my fingers. I had to grab this panel tool to remove this like hush panel that goes up underneath because it has two push, push pins that go in here. So now I'm actually not familiar with these, but let's take a look. Obviously here is the blower motor. Connector looks fine. Oh. All right, the wiring doesn't feel hot. But now I see the wiring going there, and there's a blower resistor up in there. Now, you're actually seeing this better than I am, I'll be honest with you. Can I even see that? Let's see. A lot of times you can see it melted. I'm actually just looking through the camera lens. I can't even see up there. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to reach up there and I'm going to try to unplug that. Let me reach up there and unplug that and just take a look at that. I can't film that at the same time. So there we go. Disconnected. It looks fine. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. Hmm. So, now what? I'm going to have to look up... Whoops. Sorry. I'm going to have to look up bulletins and stuff to see if there's anything in regards to this blower motor inter intermittently stopping working. And then, yeah, I am going to do a Google search to see if I find anything, just out of curiosity. When I first got in the car, the blower motor actually was not working. I started up, I turned everything on, I had nothing. When I came over here and I started disturbing the panels, that little bit of disturbance got everything working. Uh, so, do I have a bad connection? I would think if I had a bad connection on something that's that high of a draw, like the blower motor, I would think I would show some kind of a burnt connector or an overheated end on a connector, and I don't see that. Let me find out how that blower resistor actually works, because if it's one of those, what we refer to as a credit card style, um, not like the old school style with the windings in it, this might be like one of those new, uh, new style, like um, it's like a circuit board in that in there it's possible it's just no good and it's doing that so and we may want to just the fact that it's not burned up at all I don't know maybe we may want to just throw one in just to see what happens I hate throwing parts of the car 
sometimes when you have nothing to go on, what do you do? You have, sometimes you do have to load that parts cannon and let it go and find out find out what happens. And right now, I have nothing to go on. I'm gonna get my scanner though. I'm gonna hook that up, see if it shows anything. I don't think it does on these. I don't think the HVAC actually has anything. Whoops, sorry, it's going dark. I don't think the HVAC actually has anything of substance that I can use. So let me plug that back in and let's go from there. All right, guys, so I got the scanner hooked up to it. There's no codes in the system. Uh, I can read certain things. I can't read a lot, but I can read certain things. I did, do, I did do a Google search. I did a Bolton search. I even searched through, I went into my Snap-on scanner. I tried that real quick. I got the launch hooked up right now, the launch scanner. I had the Snap-on scanner hooked up and I looked through like um, mechanic, like uh, tech tips and stuff like that. I couldn't find anything. So one thing that I was thinking about was, okay, one thing that an automatic temperature system climate control system needs to see it needs to know outside temperature versus inside temperature because let's say it's seeing five degrees outside why would it turn the AC on for what reason there's no reason to turn the AC on it'll kick it on momentarily just to take the humidity out of the air but it's not going to run the AC on to bring the interior of the car to 60 degrees when it's five degrees outside it makes no sense you know, and vice versa. If it was 100 degrees on the inside of the car, or at least it thought it was 100 degrees, why would it turn the heat on? Even though you're selecting it to be 80 degrees, why would it turn the heat on? It's actually going to turn the AC on. A lot of people don't understand that. I've actually had that before, where somebody was complaining, this was when I was at the dealer, a Dodge Grand Caravan with climate control. And the guy was saying, oh, the heat's not working right. So I looked at it, I couldn't figure it out. Everything's working fine. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Tell, tell the guy to come in. Customer comes in, and I said, everything's working the way it's supposed to. And I showed him, and he's like, okay, yeah, it's working. I didn't realize what the problem was at the time. He comes back a little while later, and he says, it's not working. All right. So we go out there. I mean, you know, things happen. It's possible. We go out there. I'm like, it's working. What are you talking about? So he goes, here, let's get in the car. Let's go for a ride. So we go for a ride. He has the heat set, you know, to whatever it was. Uh, let's say it was 75 degrees he had it set to. And this was winter. It's set to 75 degrees. And, you know, now we had the doors open and everything else. So cold air filled the, the cabin. It got cold in there. We start driving down the road. The interior temperature is climbing up. The interior temperature gets to 75 degrees. Well, guess what? When you put your hand in front of the vent, what was hot air before is now lukewarm air. He goes, see that? It's not hot anymore. Well, yeah, no, it's not supposed to be because it's 75 degrees or 70, whatever he said it to. I said, the interior temperature is at that point now. That's why it's like that. I go, watch. And then I turned it up to max and heat came out again. I said, if you leave it on max, you get heat, you know, nonstop heat. He goes, yeah, but then it gets too hot. Okay. <laughs> well, that's how the system works. I don't know what you want me to tell you. You know, it's like at your house, you know, it's it's not going to shut the system off. Like, you know, if you have the AC on your house, you know, set to say, you know, 60 degrees or 65 degrees, when the interior of your house gets to that point, usually the AC system will shut down. In a car, it won't do that. It won't shut the system down. It'll keep it going. It just, it varies the temperature. It may go full blast one way, full blast the other way, and then vary it in between as the temperature stabilizes. So, but anyway, so on this, what I wanted to show you with temperature I could select interior temperature, 78 degrees. That's, I mean, it's blowing cold right now, but I got the doors open or the windows open and whatnot. So, and it's 82 and a half degrees outside. Uh, fan speed input is not pressed. I wanted to see that because when I select to hit the fan button down there, that should change. See. So it changed. Um, blower motor relays on I can't get it to fail so as it turns out the blower resistor is one of those solid state resistors so being that I cannot duplicate this problem one of two choices to the customer either we could put a blower resistor in and that's just a completely educated guess I know some people are going to say oh you're loading a parts can and you're not diagnosing anything correct I'm going off experience but I have to tell the customer, hey, 
you can either keep driving it and let it fail, and then I can diagnose it once it's failed, or we could put the blower resistor in, because I got a funny feeling that's what the problem is. However, it may not be the problem. It's up to you. Blower resistors are not that expensive. I think they're probably, because it looks like a regular Ford blower resistor, I'm gonna say 60 bucks. Yeah. So it's like, it's up to the customer. Do they want to do it, do they not want to do it? You know, I, I, I can't, I can't decide what a customer wants to spend. So, um, all right. Basically, I'm leaving this at that. I'm gonna put the trim panels back on and I'm gonna leave it up to the customer. What do you want to do? Uh, it's not hard to get those trim panels off because even if they wanted to do it, I can't do it today. I got too many things going on. Uh, here, actually look, so you can see. This is right in front of me in our parking lot. I got all of these cars parked all over the place. And even, Oops, here, hold on. Right behind me, there's a van right behind me. I mean, I'm actually blocked in at the moment. I got so much stuff here, it's just not even funny. So, yeah, let me do that. Let me put it all back together. But that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. Just so you see what I kind of go through on a daily basis here. Um, if you like, I'm on Facebook. I have a group called Wrenching with Kenny on Facebook. That one's a just click to join type of page. If you have any detailed questions you want to ask me about something with your car, it's probably easier if you can post it there. Because I got a lot of people that'll answer your questions there. You know, a lot of my friends and stuff like that, people I know, and you know, other people that are out there that are my friends through the internet will an help answer your questions. There's also a closed group that we have called Backyard Mechanics. If you go on that group, you have to answer all the questions. Don't answer the first question with, I'm looking for someone to fix my car because we will boot you. We, we don't want people in there that are looking for people to fix their car. We're not soliciting other people as mechanics and stuff like that to come fix your car. We want nothing to do with that. We'll help you fix your car. So, um, Also, at the bottom in the description, below the title of the, this video, you'll see I have a um, set of links for stuff on Amazon. And these are basic tools that I use that are great for home mechanics, that are great, uh, like little things that you can use around your garage at home, your professional garage. But it's a lot of basic stuff that's really good to have for your beginners too. I even have this launch scanner on there, which, you know, there's a link to that. So if you could click on it, take a look. You, know, it's, you don't have to buy anything, I'm just saying, just click on it, you know, at least you can see what's there. Uh, but yeah, so that's about it. All right, guys. I appreciate you. I really do. We just hit the 50,000 mark, and I am blown away. Blown away. Uh, I'm going to make a separate video on that over this over this upcoming weekend. But, um, yeah. So, all right, guys. If you got something out of that video, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.